Welcome to Film Daffodil, your favourite movie review. Watch to the end of the video because I'm going to tell you the real story of Father Christmas. Because this one's pretend. The Boy Called Christmas has an all-star cast, including Maggie Smith. I have always enjoyed anything this lady is in. Here, she plays a straight-talking, endearing, warm Aunt Ruth. The cast also includes Isabella O'Sullivan, Matt Fry from Plebs as Matt, and Henry Lawful as Nicholas, Mikael Huisman as Joel, and enigmatic Jim Broadbent as King. Jim tends to fall into roles where he's a little bit bumbling and likeable. Well, there's no surprises in this film. It's exactly the same role. It also features Christian Wiig as Aunt Coletta, Toby Jones as Father Topo, and Indica Watson as Little Nush. Stephen Merchant, who voices Mika. Stephen, who is best known as an English comedian, writer, director, alongside Ricky Gervais, who co-wrote The Office. Also, Sally Hawkins, who you may have seen in The Shape of Water recently, and also Lair Cake in 2004. And not forgetting Zoe Margaret Coletti as the Truth Pixie. So now we got that out of the way, why do we need another origin story? We got origin stories coming out of our ears. Hollywood seems to be completely obsessed with origin stories and just pumps us full of origins. Origins? Oranges. No, origins. Yeah, origins. A Boy Called Christmas is chock full of supporting cast that surrounds the main character, Nicholas. It's very colourful from the lights on the snowy London streets, warm hues throughout which I really enjoyed. The movie is shot wonderfully and is rather magical, however, this is another origin story of Santa Claus or Saint Nicholas. I'm not sure that we needed another origin of a character that is woven throughout Christmas culture. However, here it is. I'm going to Elf Elm to find the elves, Mika. To bring some new hopes to the world. Such a fool. Everyone knows there is no such thing as elves. You ready, old friend? Born ready. This movie is a little bit Lord of the Rings, a little bit Arthur Christmas, a little bit Santa Claus, and a little bit Christmas Chronicles. This is every Christmas movie you've ever seen all wrapped together in a big bow. You can talk. And I can fly as well. No, just kidding. No mice can fly. That would be absurd. On Christmas Eve, Andrew Moppet and Patrick, whose mother has died recently and whose father is leaving for an urgent task for work, are put in the care of Aunt Ruth, an old woman who tries to entertain the kids by telling them a Christmas tale. You be because I'm starting. Nicholas and his father Joel, a woodcutter, live in the forest. Nicholas's mother has died two years before and Nicholas tries to take comfort every night remembering the legend of a place called Elf Helm where a girl found a magical place resided by elves that helped her to survive in the winter. One night a mouse tries to steal some food but his life is spared by Nicholas who calls the mouse Mika and tries to teach him to speak. The CGI in this movie is as close to real as I've ever seen. They seem to have taken real time in making sure the bear and the stag and even Mika looks photorealistic, even hyper real. Anyway, one day the king calls the subjects and promises a big reward if someone is able to find an object that will bring hope to the kingdom. I thought it a rather humorous commentary on the times of today when uh, the king asked for any ideas and the people shouted, Healthcare! A living wage! Still relevant today, Boris. Kristen Wiig, I think, is a bit hit or miss in most films. And we won't mention Ghostbusters. Oops! However, in this, I think that she actually stole the show by playing Aunt Coletta, as she is decidedly nasty and ratchet, and she makes Nicholas think that he's eating his pet mouse, Mika. Ugh. Anyway, Nicholas finds the map and confirms the existence of Elf Helm, and so he decides to go to the north and find his father and give him the map. During the journey, Nicholas learns that Mika has learned to speak English. This provides hope, continuing his quest. When they reach the Half Moon Forest, a reindeer who Nicholas names Blitzen allows Nicholas to mount him, and the journey begins. Elf Helm, it's incredible. I'm going to be honest, kid. I did not see this one working out for us. What is this? This is a Christmas party. Nicholas comes back to Elf Helm with a little help from Kit, and he is able to bring the little elf on time to prevent Father Topo from being punished. Who is that? I'm Nicholas. Nicholas then tells her how his mother always remembered how overjoyed she was in Elf Helm. Mother Vodo then tells him about how she lost faith in humans when the news spread in the place that the men, including Joel, took little Kip. Overall, this is a story of reconciliation. 
The performances in this movie are excellent and complimentary considering the wide cast of talent. Although there is nothing especially new about the story of Santa Claus here that will add to the numerous enumerations. The individual performances create an entertaining movie such as Indica Watson as Little Noosh and especially Zoe Margaret Coletti as the Truth Pixie are hilarious throughout with her inability to not lie which gets her into so much trouble. What stands out throughout this movie is the special effects, which can't be said for all movies, which blend so well in the environments and the sweeping landscapes and mountainous epicness. I watched this film with my 12 year old son and family and the response was very positive. It has a runtime of about an hour and 46 minutes and it zooms along. Normally Stephen Merchant gets on my nerves, however he was actually brilliant as Mika and has some enjoyable comic lines throughout the movie. Some viewers may find it a bit smulchy, there's plenty of superficial nods to the iconography of Christmas. It's also a wee bit politically correct in places. It has an air of Roald Dahl's Charlie Bucket as well as the painting by numbers ice queen of the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe vibe. It has a character art at least. Well, if you're not really interested in all that and just want to sit down and have Christmas thrown down your neck by sterile writers that make you feel the way you did in every other Christmas movie that this is derived from, then this is excellent fluff. Saying that, I did enjoy it and the story may be forgettable and merged with so many others, yet there is an emerging talent in this film and some hilarious moments and some spectacular set pieces too. Well, now that you've heard the review of A Boy Called Christmas, it's time for me to hold up to my promise and tell you the true story of Santa Claus, which I may add is a little controversial at least and maybe a bit less dramatic than A Boy Called Christmas. Well, before I spill the beans on Father Christmas, how about liking, subscribing and hitting that notification bell, that way you won't miss any further uploads of reviews that I'll post in the future. Well, now we've got that out of the way. Okay, you ready? Santa Claus or Father Christmas is not actually from Lapland or wherever, that's just something that we tell children to cause them to wonder. No, Father Christmas is not actually called Father Christmas. Who calls themselves Father as a first name, has a surname of a celebration, come on that's outlandish. No, Father Christmas is actually called Derek. He's a mechanic and he lives with his two children with questionable taste in clothes and they live in Peckham. It's like central to everywhere. This year you have been asked to try really hard to always say please and thank you. And Santa knows that there's a special gift that you have been hoping for. <laughs> Do you think you'll be nice enough? <laughs> I guess it's time to use my very special machine. <laughs> Hello? Go get the file, please. Santa will see you soon. Ho 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 ho! Merry Christmas! Is Santa real? I, I can't believe that anyone would even ask me that question. Of course he's real. If he wasn't real, how would we get a sleigh to go all over the world to deliver presents? Everything would break down in the North Pole. I, I don't even want to mention this, otherwise Mrs. Claus will be on the phone. And believe me, you don't want to meet her when she's angry. The elves would be breaking down, the reindeer would be going into therapy, there'd be snowmen weeping. Of course Santa exists. If he didn't exist, I'd just be some bloke in an elf outfit. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this seasonal Christmas video. And if you did, I've got another one about Home Alone, the 1990 version and also the 2021 Disney version. And I'll put the link just here. And I'll see you in the next video.